Alright, so we're ready now for step number three. First is define the CIT and then determine the CIS and now decide on the title of the sermon. So ngayon, naintindihan mo na yung anong gusto sabihin ng author to the original audience, that's the CIT. And then you, you want to use this message to your, to your contemporary audience. Meron ka ng PS to connect this, your purpose of the sermon. And now... <clears throat> You want to make a job on the uh, title of the sermon. Yung title is very important for at least three things. Number one, it grabs attention. It grabs attention. Sa mga simbahan na mayroong billboards sa labas in America, most churches, they have their billboards outside. Nakasuhulat na yung title ng sermon for the next Sunday. So people are driving and they see, uy, ganda ng title dyan next Sunday. Ha? Dyan tayo magsimba ngayong Sunday. You know, it grabs their attention. Also, of course, it provides a reinforcement to the sermon. A lot of times, you know, parang summary statement yan of what the sermon will be about. <clears throat> but obviously, pinakamalaking help ng title is the memory. When people ask, ano nga yung sermon ni Pastor last Sunday? Immediately, the first thing they remember is the title. O kaya yung joke. <laughs> Nung Sunday na yun. Yun ang nare-remember ng mga tao. But the, what are the qualities of a good title? Number one, a good title is tantalizing. Ibig sabihin ng tantalizing, it whets the appetite. Alright? And so, ibig sabihin, parang ano yan eh, parang uh, sa pagkain, merong, uh, ano tawag na sa pagkain? Yung unang ano, appetizer. Alright? Appetizer yan, sa title pa lang. And then, of course, a good title should be brief. It should be brief. Itong title na to, hindi ito magandang title. 17 reasons why the modern church is not getting the job done as it should be getting job done. Sobrang haba naman yan. Kaya dapat niyan, i-reduce mo lang to several words, the breakdown of the modern church. Yun, pwedeng ganun, the breakdown. Another title is catchy. It should be catchy. Maganda yung mga titles na parang uh, naglalaro sa utak. Ano? It's, it's a little catchy. Uh, I had a sermon, James chapter 4, about the tongue. Di ba? James chapter 4 about the tongue. Ang title ng sermon ko noong time na yon, Sermon on the Mouth. So medyo catchy ng content sa na sermon on the mouth, sermon on the mouth. And then I saw this title, ginamit ko to kay Dr. Luis to nung title. Ginamit ko yung title niya on Father's Day. Ang title ng sermon are fathers who are not yet in heaven. Ba? Galing ano catching catching title, our fathers who are not yet in heaven. Okay. And then merong dapat title na appropriate the title should be appropriate. May mga titles na hindi, hindi bagay. You know, for example, palabas yung Star Wars, and then he was preaching on the Holy Spirit, ang title ng sermon niya, May the Force Be With You. Parang catchy, no? Pero it's not appropriate. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is a person. Kaya hindi appropriate. And theologically, it's not appropriate. May mga titles naman na medyo... Again, this is a true story. Merong isang pastor, yung kanyang sermon is about trials. Na yung mga trials natin, merong kabutihang may ano yan sa atin. Medyo masakit yung mga trials, pero merong good, something good will come out of it. Kaya lang yung title niya kasi, masakit pero masarap. Kaya hindi magandang tayo. It's not appropriate. Medyo parang uh, iba yung dating, eh, no? Maglalaro pa yung isipan mo eh. And so, again, that's not appropriate. Medyo catchy, pero hindi maganda. Alright. And then, a good sermon should be, a good title should be deliverable. It should be deliverable. Meaning, do not promise something in your title that you cannot accomplish in your sermon. Example, yung title ng sermon mo, How to Solve All Your Problems. Ba, sobra naman title yan. <laughs> hindi mo madideliver yan in one sermon. How to Solve All Your Problems. It should be deliverable. Alright. So, and then it should be related number six. No matter how good the title is, if it's not related to the sermon, it's not a good title. Okay? It should always be related to your sermon. Now, the types of titles, you can use a uh, keyword or phrase type of title. For example, the dream team. 
Yan yung Ephesians 4, no? yung mga gifts doon na minimension. And then, you can use uh, uh, an imperative statement. Imperative statement, medyo uh, naguutos. Go for gold! 1 Corinthians 9. O kaya yung title na Press On from Philippians chapter 3. Mga titles yan, imperative. Ako yung gustong-gusto kong titles ng sermon, yung interrogative titles, yung mga titles na nagtatanong, may question mark yung title. Kasi it becomes a hook, you know, that keeps people uh, hooked to your sermon. Yung title, for example, Enjoying or Enduring. Yan yung title ko for marriage. Are you still enjoying it or just enduring your marriage? At and then, of course, yung sermon ko nga this coming Sunday about temptation is victim or victor or victim, the anatomy of temptation. So, mga interrogative titles, what's so, what's so amazing about grace? Ba, may title nga ng librong ganyan, ano? And then, of course, there's the declarative statement na title. Declarative statement, kagaya ng uh, you are the salt of the earth. Alright? Declarative na statement. Next, we need to have we need to design the structure of the sermon. Design the structure. Ito na po yung pumapasok yung outlining. Again, friends, remember what I've said. We're not saying na kapag walang outline yung sermon mo, hindi na biblical sermon yan. No, that's not true. Of course, that's your own style. Alright? It's not sa'yo na yan kung gusto mo nang uh, meron kang outline. But a good outline, ito po mag-provide ng several advantages. Number one, it gives structure to the sermon. May backbone eh. Merong structure yung sermon. Merong logical progression. Masusundan mo. Ito nga yung it gives guidance to the listener. Alam nila, oy, point one, tapos na. Point two, oy, three points si pastor. Alam natin, patapos na to. Kasi may mga ibang sermon, di mo malala, ano ba, kalagit na, ano ba tayo, patapos na ba tayo? Hindi ko alam eh. You know, kasi paikot-ikot yung uh, sermon ni pastor. Number three, it gives a sermon a sense of pace. May pacing. Kung 30 minutes yung sermon mo, tas 3 points ka, at least tig 10 minutes bawat point. So, meron kang proper pacing kapag merong outline. Number three, of course, it brings unity to the various parts of the sermon. Kasi marami kang materials na, i- na i-program mo sa mo ipapasok yung mga illustrations, for example, sa sermon. And then, yan ang nga nasabi natin, it gives arrangement to the abundance of exegetical material. Again, outlining po ito, so, depende na po yan how you outline. Malaking bagay po dito yung structural, di- uh, yung sinasabi nating um, the structural diagram. We discussed this in level 2. We will have some structural diagram in a little while, pero dun po natin to diniscuss sa level 2. So, for example, kung 8 verses yan, na-divide mo into 3 portions, abay, okay lang yan. So, that means you can have uh, an introduction, yung pinakabody ng sermon mo, Paano mo i-explain yung 1 to 3, illustrate mo yung exegete mo yung 4 to 6, tapos sa 7 and 8, more on application, just give a point. So, depende na how you're going to develop it. The Lord Jesus Christ, when He gave instruction to John, nung sinusulat yung Revelation, very interesting, the Lord Jesus Christ gave a three-point outline. I'm sorry. A three-point outline. Sabi ni Jesus kay John, Write therefore what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. So dito po, very clearly, you can divide the whole book of Revelation. What you have seen is Revelation 1. What is now is Revelation 2 and 3. And then what will take place later is Revelation 4 to, uh, 4 to 22. So what you have seen is the past. Christ is unveiled in chapter 1. What is now, the churches un- are unveiled, the seven churches of Asia. And then, of course, the culmination or consummation unveiled, the seven events that are about to happen. Starting with, of course, yung nga, yung, uh, the rupture. So, three points po yan. It's a puto sa parang kinokopya ng mga pastor. Ah, that's a good example that the Lord Jesus Christ has set for us. Three points na outline. It's enough. You know, medyo tama na yung, uh, yung kanyang uh, contents. No? Three points. Kasi kung five, six, or so many points, medyo mahirap ng tanda. Pero at least three, madaling mag-grasp. Now, how do you preserve your outline? If you're going to use an outline, use the acronym SAVE. How you save it? Letter S, you state the point. Kung gagamit ka ng outline, sasabihin mo sa congregation, Brothers and sisters, point number one, it's time to wake up. Alright? Point number two, it's time to clean up. So, ini-state mo yung point. And then, yung letter A, you now anchor the point. Saan mahanap yan? Point number one, it's time to wake up. Look at verse 11. Romans 13, verse 11. I-anchor mo. 
Tapos mo nga anchor you validate the point. I-validate mo. Paano mo nakuha dun yung it's time to wake up? Saan mo nakuha yung idea na it's time to wake up from verse 11? And then, of course, you try to explain uh, whatever it is that you want to uh, amplify from that point, it's time to wake up. So you save your outline by stating it, anchoring it, validating, and then explaining your point. There are different types, reiterative uh, types of uh, outlining. Ito po yung reiterative patterns. Number one is called alliteration. Alliteration. Ito pong alliteration, alam na po ng karamihan to. Ito po yung same letters, beginning ng word, same letters. For example, a purpose interlude, a purposeful interlude, a personal interlude, private and peaceful interlude. Letter P lahat yan, one line alliteration. May mga pastors po marunong gumawa ng two line alliteration. So yung two line alliteration, assume our position in Christ, assert our prerogative in Christ, and then accept our provision in Christ. That's a two line alliteration. Letter A tsaka letter P. Eh may mga pastors po na napakagaling, they can make a three line alliteration. Ba? Ito na, three line alliteration. Respect the mystery of God's provision or of God's providence. Request the ministry of God's people. Rest in the mastery of God's peace and rejoice in the majesty of God's power. Three line alliteration yan, R, M, and P. Aba, hindi madali yan, kapatid. Talagang pinag-iisipan yan. Ito, nakabase yan sa Acts chapter 12. Remember Acts chapter 12? Paul, as si Peter at si James were arrested, pero si James was beheaded and now, si Peter was being preserved sa Feast of Passover para doon siya, siya maging martyr, doon siya patayin. So, una muna, is there favoritism with God? Why he preserved Peter tapos pinatay si James? No, friends, respect the mystery of God's providence. God is provident, you know? God is still in control. And then, anong gagawin mo? Request the ministry of God's people. Acts chapter 12, the whole church, you know, was praying for Peter. Ngayon ang nangyari kay Peter, the night before he was to be... To be uh, killed, rest in the mastery of God's peace. Anong ginawa ni Peter? Natutulog. Makakatulog ka ba? Kinabukasan, papatayin ka na. But he was able to rest, alright? In the mastery of God's peace. And then, rejoice in the majesty of God's power. Abay, ginising siya ng angel. Paglabas niya, automatic doors. Yung mga tatlong doors, automatic. The first automatic doors in the Bible. Nandun, kita mo, pagdaan ni Peter, talagang bumumbukas ng sarili. So, ang galing ng outline na yan, kapatid. Three-line alliteration. Now, my professor in seminary, sa doctoral studies, Dr. Wayne McDill, he is against alliteration. Against siya dyan, sa alliteration na yun, yung letter P lahat, letter T lahat, against siya dyan. Sabi niya kasi, ang reason niya, sabi niya, alliteration consistently compromises conceptual clarity. Aba, talagang alliterated naman yung kanyang reason din. Pero against daw siya, against daw siya. Pero alliterated. And so again, there's a lot that we can learn there. But friends, the second type of reiterative pattern is of course is assonance. Assonance, same sound, same syllable sound sa ending ng word. Same sounding, a same end sound. No? For example, we must treat our enemies pleasantly, profitably, Prayerfully, that's a one-line assonance. Meron tayong two-line assonance. Remember the three fingers? Ano yung three fingers natin? From ancient text to the modern audience? Exegetical investigation, theological reflection, homiletical presentation. So, two-line assonance yan. Tatlong kal, tatlong shon. Yan ang two-line assonance. Alright? And so again, that is just to aid memory para mas madaling matandaan. And then, of course, the third type of uh, reiterative pattern is tung tinatawag lang na repetition. You just repeat uh, some of the words like, Why should I crown him? How should I crown him? When should I crown him? Okay, that's, that's repetition. Now, friends, we need to realize na meron pong dangers itong reiteration. Sometimes yung abuse ng mga preachers, they use reiterative patterns, sometimes demonstrate a tendency to manipulate the subject matter in order to make the content fit a desired design. Kahit hindi naman letter P, pwersahing letter P. The past, the present, and the future. Ba? Letter P pa rin lahat siya. Sobra, masyadong persado. And so, para lang talaga maging letter P. Addiction naman yung iba. Some pastors become so addicted 
to the use of reiteration that their designs become burdensome for the hearers. May mga pastor, outline three days ginagawa. Outline lang, tatlong araw, binubuno. Grabe naman yan. Outline lang, tatlong araw. And so again, medyo uh, may abuse, addiction, of course, arrogance. Parang kagaya rin yan ng, you mentioned so many Greek words, you know. And so, parang to display their ingenuity and then their cleverness. But friends, we need to realize na talagang may advantages rin naman yung ganitong mga outlines. It helps in the interpretation, it helps in the instruction, it helps in the internalization ng sermon. Kaya kung meron kang outline, medyo nakakatulong din naman. Let's have some outline here. Subukan natin Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. Alright? Come on, subukan nga natin, magsulat tayo. Paano ba natin niya outline yan? Let's say, textual sermon, two verses eh. Textual sermon. Subukan nyo nga, paano nyo i-divide dyan? This is an instruction from the Apostle Paul after 11 chapters of God's mercies. Sabi niya ngayon, I urge you therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. Now, sa original, plural yan. Dapat mercies yan. Kaya in view of God's mercies, yung 11 chapters, itong dapat natin gawin. Paano natin nahatiin yan? Kaya, sige nga, magsulat nga tayo. Sample lang, subukan lang natin mag-outline tayo. Come on, just try it on a scratch of paper. Paano natin nahatiin yan? Ano yung pinaka-main emphasis dito ni Paul? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Yan, yung 1 and 2. Yung buong ano. Oh, let's say, ipipitch natin to ngayong Sunday. If you are to make an outline of uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, how would you make it? Anong pwedeng, uh, anong pwedeng gawing outline dyan? Paano mo hahatiin yan? Anong, what way do you... Can you make a section? How many sections or how many uh, you know divisions can you make out of uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2? Sige lang, subukan nyo lang. Ano lang yan? Uh, practice. Again, as I've said, this is not an exact science. There are several ways you can do this. Kaya gusto ko lang marinig ano yung mga creative minds natin dito, ano palagay nyo pa, paano nyo gagawin outline yan? Ano palagay nyo yung main subject niya dito? Alright? Anong gusto nyo ipagawa or ano? Again, of course, a lot easier kung nagawa na natin yung exegetical investigation, but uh, this one, once we move into uh, the design, design the structure. Sige, any suggestion? Anong possible na outline dito? Anyone? Baka na-preach nyo na to. Just tell us your outline. How would you outline this? Anybody would like to go first? Kung wala, anybody would like to go second? Yes. Christian living, alright? Yan ang pinakaan natin, Christian living. Tapos? Aba, letter P din lahat, ha? So, ano yung una nyo? So, Christian living, tapos? Present your body? Aha. Present your body. So, dito yan, ano? Tapos, pleasing to God. Tapos? Proper? Worship? Ah, dito. A uh, verse 1 pa lang yan, ha? So, present, pleasing, tapos proper worship. Okay? Alright. Pero again, verse 1 lang yan. Hindi pa nasama yung verse 2. So, may tatlong letter P ka pa sa verse 2. Pattern naman dito. Tapos, <laughs> may pleasing uli dito, tsaka perfect uli. Ba, okay, ha? Nandun lahat. And so, pwede rin. <laughs> Alright? Sige lang, subukan natin. So, dito, if we're going to do, ito nga yung exegetical investigation, if we do the uh, uh, rewriting, a uh, the passage using a structural diagram, ito yung number 7 natin sa ating ano, we can do it this way. So, ito yung sinasabi niya, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, plural nga yan sa original, offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. 
Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God's will. What God's will is His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So unang unang muna, I urge you. That's the main subject dito. He's urging them. All right. Unang muna si nung ino urge niya. He's addressing the brothers and sisters. Ano yung basis ng kanyang pag urge? In sabi niya, in view of God's mercy. But the main subject is urging them to do something. In view of God's mercy, yun yung pinakabasihan niya. Yung basis niya. Dahil sa mercy ng Panginoon, sabi niya, itong brothers and sisters, una muna, offer your bodies. That's the first thing. Alright? So that's the first thing that is urging them. Offer your bodies. Sabi niya rito, yung pag-offer natin ng bodies natin, that's a living sacrifice, it's a holy sacrifice, it's a pleasing sacrifice to God. Yung pag-offer natin ng bodies before God, yan, yan ay living sacrifice, it's a holy sacrifice, and it's a pleasing sacrifice yung pag-offer natin ng bodies natin. Tapos sabi niya, pag ginawa natin yung pag-offer na yan, this is your true and proper worship. This is true, this is your true and proper worship. You know, sa English, dinagdagan nilang true and proper. Pero sa original kasi, ang ginamit lang na Greek word dyan is logikos. This is your logikos. Anong English word came from logikos? Logic. Sabi lang niya, this is your logical worship. Ito lang yung natural. Ito yung practical result because of the mercies of God na nat nat natabasa mo. This is the way to logically, practically respond to the mercies of God. So sabi niya, this is your true and proper worship. So offer your bodies, yung pag-offer na yan, that's a living sacrifice, a holy sacrifice, a pleasing sacrifice. And then pangalawa, sabi niya, I urge you to offer, I urge you, do not conform to the pattern of this world. And then pangatlo, sabi niya ngayon dito, I urge you to offer, I urge you do not conform, I urge you be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ngayon, pag ginawa natin yan, sabi niya, then, saan nakakonect yung then? Yung then, palagay ko para sa aking analysis, nakakonect yan dun sa I urge you. Pag ginawa natin to, then, itong tatlo na to, pinapagawa niya, offer, do not conform, be transformed. Pag ginawa natin yan, I urge you to do this, then, ito yung magiging result, then you will be able to what? Sabi niya, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. Matidiscover mo na God's will, three things about God's will. God's will is good, God's will is pleasing, and God's will is perfect. Pag ginawa natin yan. And so dito, ma-analyze mo ngayon, okay, ito yung sermon ko, ito yung outline ko, po-focus ako dito. So dito sa structural diagram, hindi ka mawawala kasi sinusundan mo yung logical progression ng discussion ng author. So possibly dito, when we do the... Uh, When we relate the passage contextually, kasi hanapan natin ng context ito. Kasi Romans, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2 na ito. Nasa towards the end, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Alam natin na yung chapter 1 hanggang chapter 3 talks about sin, the theme of sin. 3 to, 50, 3 to 5 talks about the theme of salvation. 6 to 8 talks about sanctification. Tapos yung uh, 9 to 11 talks about sovereignty. Tapos yung 12 to 15 talks about service. Diyan na papasok yung ating Romans 12, it's about service. It's about consecration to God. So pwede nating gawing uh, pinaka-subject matter natin dito, or title even, is the call to serve. When we serve God, ito dapat. How do we serve God? How do we consecrate ourselves to God? So ito na yung tatlo. Sabi niya, I urge you, unang-una muna, sabi niya, offer your bodies. We can call this, number one, total dedication. When we serve God, there must be total dedication. Offer your bodies. Number two, hindi lang yan, do not conform. That means, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Medyo didistansya tayo dyan, huwag tayong susunod. So it talks about radical separation. And then number three, it talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind dito, ha? Ibig sabihin yan, dapat mayroong personal transformation. So pagka in-outline natin yan, anong tawag sa outline na yan? Assonance. Okay? So, pareho yung sound. Two-line assonance ito. And so, we have there the call to serve total dedication, radical separation, and personal transformation. So, dito lang, mas medyo mas masisimplify how you're going to discuss itong Romans 12, 1 and 2. Alright? Again, that's just a suggestion. There are several ways to handle these uh, uh, two verses. Pero isa lang yan sa paraan. Okay? Okay?